Our distinguished guests on the stage are Al Manti and Damage Control Chief Petty Officer Kent Welsh, United States Navy. And our distinguished guests in the back are veterans. Good afternoon.
community, we welcome you as we celebrate the service of our veterans and those presently serving our country. America has a sacred trust to care for those who defend her, from the warriors who stormed the beaches of Normandy on D-Day, to the brave men and women returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. Our veterans share a legacy of service that crosses generational lines and upholds the values upon which our nation was founded. Service to a cause greater than self. Let us then, as a grateful nation, hold them in highest regard as we offer tribute. Today, we honor our veterans, and again on the official Veterans Day, Sunday, November 11, 2012, we come together as a nation to thank and honor our veterans. An applause, please. Thank you. Okay, who in your family wants to 
to Randy My grandma died. Um, her name was Grandma Pat, but I don't know where she died. My family never told me. Is there somebody in your family that belongs to the, uh, the military? Somebody that... Okay, and Dora, come on up, please. And Dora. My great-great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather. Do you, do you know he was in the Army? He was in the Army.
policy, foresee the future. Um, he would not know that you know, our country would be in numerous uh, wars and confrontations uh, after World War I. Uh, <clears throat> so the sacrifices these members have made uh, is truly unbelievable. There's an old saying that all have given something uh, and some have given all. Uh, like Al said, my, my career started in 1990 as a fireman recruit in the United States Navy. Um, my job uh, while I was in the Navy for 20 years was a, a firefighter by trade. Uh, I did uh, firefighting, uh, I also did a lot of training, uh, fire system maintenance, uh, and then I was also a uh, chemical, biological, radiological weapons technician. Uh, my, I, I retired in August of 19, or excuse me, 2010, and I re relocated up here to uh, Northeast Ohio, uh, where my wife Diane is from, and uh, my son Jack there goes to school here, and uh, we absolutely love it. Uh, during my 20 years of service, I was on numerous types of ships. I felt it kind of my responsibility to really experience as much as I possibly could uh, during my, uh, my career. Uh, my first ship, like I said, was the uh, USS Wisconsin. Some, most of you probably have no idea or ever remember seeing it, but some of our, uh, our, our old folks there, the moms and dads, probably remember seeing the first, uh, first salvos that were shot into Kuwait and Iraq in 1990, and the ship that I was on was part of that. Uh, there was two battleships of the four, uh, the USS Wisconsin and the USS Missouri, and we were a group part of those opening uh, uh, attacks uh, against uh, uh, Saddam Hussein and his, uh, his Republican Guard. After I did a couple years on board there, I went to the USS John F. Kennedy, which was one of the last fossil fuel aircraft carriers. Uh, it's approximately 1,000 feet it's now being uh, retrofitted to be a museum up in Philadelphia. That was really a rewarding career because that was a very significant shift in our history because uh, President John F. Kennedy uh, and his family, it was, it was named after President Kennedy, and uh, he was a staunch anti-atomic uh, uh, power advocate, and uh, the United States Navy wanted to make it an atomic or a nuclear powered ship. Uh, and ended up making it uh, powered by gasoline instead. Uh, after a short span at uh, a place called uh, Transient Personnel Unit, where I basically helped to uh, get people out of the Navy, I did a tour of duty on the USS Monterey, which was a guided missile cruiser. Uh, once again, got deployed in support of, of operations in the Middle East, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, uh, Qatar, which is some of the places I've been over there. After that ship, which is where I got from under my current rank and last rank, which is Chief Petty Officer, which is equivalent uh, in the Army of a gunnery sergeant, uh, same in the Marine Corps, of a gunnery sergeant. Uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure what it is in the Air Force, but it's, a, it's an E-7, or enlisted rank number seven. From there, I went to the Afloat Training Group, and I got to train other firefighters and chemical weapons technicians uh, in response to uh, those type of threats. Last ship, which was a USS Baton, uh, which was an amphibious assault ship where Marines would basically they would come on board and we'd take them over to Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, then we'd sink the back end of the boat, let them float out, and then they'd go do their thing. Uh, I really visited a lot of amazing places during my 20 year uh, career. Uh, I've been to Italy, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Greece, France, and uh, I can't even tell you how many different countries I've been to in the Middle East. Um, I have to say that probably out of everywhere I've been, uh, Ireland was by far uh, uh, the most beautiful, at least in my opinion. Um, I participated in numerous wars and uh, campaigns in defense of my country. I spent the better portion of 20 years here serving in the United States before ret retiring and relocating up here. Uh, while on those deployments over 20 years, I remember several times wishing I was home. And there's probably not a single service member, uh, retired or active, that hasn't thought about, you know, I wish I was home. I, you know, I, this is tough. Uh, I'm missing things at home, but I still have to do it. Interestingly, now, after being retired, I really, really do miss the camaraderie, the esprit de corps, and that sense of being part of something truly special. <clears throat> Service members are a special breed. 
Um, some do amazing things like fly fighter jets, um, you know, get to be a Navy SEAL, drive a tank, or assault the beaches. Uh, what you don't know is that for every jet pilot or Navy SEAL, there is a soldier or a sailor standing at midnight watch, uh, preparing a jeep, or excuse me, repairing a jeep, washing laundry, or cooking breakfast. All these men and women do their job not for the money and fame, but the idea of what they do is righteous and worthwhile for the greater good of the United States. It may sound cliche, but we do it, and we continue to do it because we believe in the oath that we take to support and defend the United States. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, everybody knows what just happened last Tuesday, right? What do we do? What do we do as United States citizens? Do they know? No. We voted, yeah. Uh, this was a significant time in our, in, in our history. Uh, we got the opportunity, regardless of your political affiliation, you got the right to choose, you know, your elected leaders. Um, and service members, both past and present, and in particular, some of our oldest service members who are no longer on this planet, fought for our right to do that. So, pretty significant time in, in, in your lifespan. What I want to convey today is that groups like the VFW, the American Legion, the Veterans Administration, the Chief Petty Officers Association, and other veteran organizations are here to promote veterans worldwide. We never forget that veterans is what have done for our nation. When we go to school, you read a book, you play in the yard, or visit with friends and family. We can do all of these things because of the commitment of U.S. service members, both past and present. Our service is all volunteer. We continue to be that way because young Americans are willing to take a chance and dedicate a portion of their lives, and in some cases all of their lives, to the service of their country. America is a better place because of its veterans. Please do not forget what they have done. <clears throat> Thank them and show your appreciation by attending events like this one today. I am very proud of what I have done for my country, and it feels good knowing that I have, given, I have had the opportunity to give a little bit back. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you guys today, and have a great day.
Remember all the battle battles fought. fought. Remember all the tears families cried. Remember it was freedom the soldiers brought. To this very day, soldiers are underappreciated. Veterans Day is the day for the dead, living, and fighting soldiers to be remembered. At this time, would all veterans please rise to be acknowledged for the sacrifices you have made for our freedom? Thank, Thank you, veterans, for serving our country.
next little what? Ready? Two. Would you give them a round of applause? Thank you. And I don't believe we mentioned that Mrs. Berry has somebody here special. Miss, Mrs. Berry's father just retired the colors. Thank you so much. Please join us for refreshments since our library is really right behind this curtain. We're going to have you go down into the kindergarten area and uh, some of the ladies over here will show you which way to go to get a few refreshments. Um, thank you for coming and uh, teachers, I think we'll let you um, take the little ones first. <laughs>